and I welcome all of you at this hour. I know for, for some of you it's uh, early in the morning and some of you are joining in late, but I really appreciate you guys being here. So I'm Fezan Kazi and I work as an analyst, like Tiza said, uh, for Blue Altair. And today's session is going to be how we can use the plugins uh, to you know customize our Airflow web server. So without any delay, I'm just going to share my screen real quick. So, yeah, uh, as we all of as we all know that uh, the main four features of Airflow that makes it a really great tool is the scalability. I mean, it's really dynamic, it's extensible and it's elegant. Well, we don't need to get into, uh, into the definition, but uh, giving a quick intro about the scalability that our Airflow can be scaled to perform or, you know, undertake huge amounts of workloads or, you know, it's, uh, you know, really, uh, dynamic in the form of uh, the ingestion of data and the pipelines that you create, everything is dynamic. And when we talk about the extensibility, well, you can uh, keep on adding operators or, you know, you can extend it as much as you want. So this meetup uh, is based upon the extensibility of uh, the Airflow's web server. So as we all know that, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, some of you might know that Airflow is built on top of Flask App Builder. Well, your web server, since it's based or it's built upon uh, on top of the Flask App Builder, it allows you to extend or modify the web server as per your needs. It's uh, it's really simple. It's all Python code. You know, you can template it all around and make any modifications to suit uh, to suit your needs. Well, all of us might have seen this beautiful login page. It's just an example of how extensible uh, Airflow is and how much flexibility it offers you. So as we all might have seen, uh, you know, for, for Airflow 2.x users, this is the login screen. And, you know, there are so many good examples or tutorials out there of how to change your general login method uh, to use any alternative. So by default, Airflow uses, you know, the database authentication. As you can see on the screen, it's a, a really good, really nice uh, page. But, you know, it's you can also customize it to use uh, LDAP, uh, which uh, uses authentication based on an Active Directory, such as a Microsoft uh, Active Directory. Or, you know, we can also use an open ID authentication that allows users to authenticate themselves using their email accounts and stuff. So, you know, we are not going to change uh, the authentication today, but uh, one more important feature that we can uh, tackle today is uh, using plugins, which is also a feature of the Flask app builder. So moving ahead, uh, what we're going to be seeing today is that we all have seen this pretty UI but if you notice right here, we can enable, uh, you know, certain plugins that allows us to route on our web server and, you know, uh, and, and serve certain uh, requests. So what do I mean by this? So let's say some of you are using dbt in your tasks and uh, while using dbt, you uh, generate some documentation server. So when you do generate a documentation server, that server has to be somewhere, you know, uh, underneath the hood, you are just creating a service. It has ingress in front of it. You know, th that's too much technical terms, but you know, uh, a normal airflow user must not need to go and find uh, the link to that documentation server. Uh, and uh, our UI itself should be able to guide us uh, to that server. So in that particular case, you know, we can have, uh, uh, you know, we can have a link that says, you know, DPT documentation server. And when you click on that, you can go ahead and uh, you can visit those uh, uh, DPT doc uh, documentation. So how exactly can we do this? So Airflow uh, provides us a, a feature called Airflow plugins. Uh, which uh, where we have to make all of the necessary modifications and uh, it picks up 
itself. So let's take a look how the uh, you know how the, what the process looks like. I'm going to share my screen to some code. All right. So some of you might have de deployed Airflow using the Python package, Python installation. Some of you might be using Docker. Uh, to serve your Airflow instance, or some of you might be using Kubernetes. Well, uh, the uh, main principle behind using plugins for all of these is pretty much the same, that in your Airflow installation, when let's say, uh, let's assume that your Airflow has been installed, there is going to be a folder that says plugins. And inside of this plugins folder, you should have all of your you know flask app builder modifications so we, we're gonna come we're gonna come back to this uh but first let's see what our code generally looks like so as we see here we have airflow we are we are importing the airflow plugin from our you know general airflow package from flask like i said airflow is built on top of flask and you know that is what we're going to be using to create a blueprint and what is a blueprint it is just you know it helps us re record certain operations to be executed later or you know so register certain paths and how can we navigate through these paths so and then we have flask app builder we are using certain things such as app builder base view base view expose we're going to see what all of these are and this thing right here could be any python function that you might want to implement we're going to talk about this uh how, how can we use a custom uh, python plugin uh, to serve our particular needs and uh, you know once again this is uh, a part of uh, flask uh, forms uh, where you can serve different kind of forms and uh, uh you know uh, have the user interact with these forms so we start with defining a blueprint and uh, we give this plugin a name and then uh, these are certain parameters that we are discussing that is uh, you know uh, what is the templates folder where our templates is going to be so basically since uh, we will be uh, serving certain web pages uh, and those are the jinja templated web pages and what is the folder name so that goes here and this is the static folder basically you know if you have any css files or javascript files or images so uh, where those static files are going to be so these two refer to to those folder only so coming back to creating a form so this is pretty generic we can you can read about this in flask forms so we create a form let's say for our particular case so before i demonstrate you know the entire code let's take a look what this looks like so i already have a cluster ready but i'm gonna but i'm still gonna show how to get started but so that everyone knows what it's gonna look like i'm just gonna show a small uh demo of what our web page is gonna look like i'm gonna move over now let me just share my entire screen okay if it's visible so here i am this is my airflow uh, web server we have the general tag security you know all these tabs but we but we also have a test plugin category and there we have a link that says test view so now if i click on test view i go over to a new page well we can see right here uh, that uh, i have a path from my uh, uh, uh you know uh, base location and then here are the four different fields that i have generated using a form well you can get as creative as you want you can add css you can have whatever you want so we're gonna talk about why we could need something like this so if i go ahead you know it's just a simple uh plugin where i enter certain data and this data is uh, displayed back when i submit the form so when i click on fetch so it goes to the back end and what i see is the data so why are we talking about this so there could be many times you know where you want to fetch a particular metadata base um, uh, you want to fetch a metadata from the metadata database where 
you could have a really really unique request which is not there in your uh you know swagger ui so we all know that airflow has the swagger ui where you can fetch uh you know make or make all of these requests to fetch particular data from the database but what if there isn't uh, you know there isn't a a request which can serve your need and in those cases you know you could go ahead uh uh, you know, create a pull request, you know, uh, try to get it merged to the Airflow repository. But, you know, if you want to uh, move on and uh, get things done faster, you know, you can just create your own version of as a slight modification of Airflow and you can serve your needs. So coming back to our code, how do we do that? So for for the people who have who might have deployed airflow using the python package well it's simple they, they're going to be having a folder called plugins and there uh, they can have this file which we were talking about and it's done but for people who might have deployed airflow using uh, you know docker or kubernetes we have a couple of additional steps that is in the docker file we need to create a docker file and there we must mention which base airflow image we're going to use so right here we are going to be using apache airflow 2.3.0 and then i'm just copying my plugins folder into slash opt slash airflow so this is the installation folder by default and in there i'm going to copy my entire plugins folder and now we are at par with the people who might have installed airflow using the python package so once we do install, uh, you know, create this Docker file, what we need to do is we need to build this image using this command that's Docker build, and we are tagging it, calling it airflow one So when we build this Docker image, what's gonna happen? Uh, we gonna pull in the base image and then copy our folder on top of this image and then now that we have created our image we need to add it to our cluster so right now uh, those who are not familiar with kubernetes uh, right now we are running a kubernetes cluster locally using miniqueue so that's why i can add this image directly to my cluster uh, using this command image load airflow dash local for one dot o dot o i believe that's the command yep so but when we actually have a cluster deployed on a cloud provider such as aws gcp or something like that we generally have a repository uh you know it could be in ecr it could be on docker hub and uh, you know if you want to install airflow then uh, you know in those cases then we fetch the images from these repositories so right now we can directly add it to our cluster using this command uh, and it takes uh, you know uh, a couple of minutes and meanwhile let's see if any of you have any questions okay Hmm. Uh, so what what would have happen is uh, the image is going to be added and then we are going to install airflow uh, using this customized image which we just created and how do we do that for kubernetes users uh, we are going to use a helm chart and helm chart is the quickest way of uh, deploying your airflow instance and how are we going to do that we are going to have this file values.yaml file uh, which is a way of you know making all any kind of modification that you might want to do to our default airflow installation so right now i do not want uh too much of a, a modification i just want to use my locally created airflow file now uh, airflow image uh, that has the tag 1.0.0 and my airflow version is going to be 2.3.0 
and you know all of these other values are default i'm going to show you how to get this values yaml file as well but we are waiting for this all right it's taking a while yep it has been finally added and once we do have it load it to our cluster we can use this command that is helm obviously we need to have helm installed uh, in in order to use this command and i'm gonna paste this here so if you see right here i'm using install airflow into the namespace airflow and the i'm referring this file that is values of shaman file where i have made my necessary modifications so it's going to install airflow or upgrade airflow you know any number of times it goes ahead uh, it's going to make the necessary changes let's wait for it and by the way uh you know uh, using uh airflow on, Kuber on kubernetes I, I believe personally believe is the best way of using airflow so go ahead and uh, try using it out you just need a mini queue and you just need helm and a little bit of you know basic uh, kuber cube cdl commands that's pretty much it. Everything else uh, is uh, very simple. And if you want to get hold of these files, that is values, uh, you know, all of these files that we are using in this demonstration, um, you can go ahead and um, uh, uh, it's there on my uh, GitHub repo. I'm going to share the link with you. Let me grab that for you. I'm gonna paste it in the chat window so that if any of you want to try this out you can try this out coming back to our installation it is being installed yep there you go it says uh, airflow has been installed and then finally we need to use this command which is also there which is also here and here we are I'm gonna refresh the page. Okay, lost connection to the pod. Gonna refresh it once again. So this is what I'm talking. I was talking about. You can also mod modify this authentication. So right now, a default user has been created with the username admin and the password admin, and it has been stored in the Postgres database, which was by default. Uh, started by the helm chart but if instead you know you might want to have you might want to use ldap or open id or uh, any other authentication method this is also customizable and there are uh, so many uh tutorials out there so i sign in and i have the test plugin i do see you know once again uh, we can see that a new instance of airflow has been deployed and we do see everything in place so coming back to our plugin and i'm gonna go here test plugin and we were talking about the forms so now that so once we have created the form and then we go ahead and create a class that's called you know you can call it anything and note that whatever you name it this is the path that you're going to see uh here as you see test app build a base view this is what you have here it's going to go into lowercase and this is the path that you're going to see so now on uh, this path you can have a get method or a post method and uh, then uh, in this so this is general flask programming you create a class for a view and then you define a function so here in this function basically which is a view uh, you are uh, getting the form but then you're checking if the request is post then you fetch all the form data like param1 param2 param3 param4 and then you can do anything with it it's totally up to you i if you see here i have my task output so this my task output is simply a class which i am importing if you see my task I am importing it from a separate file. You're going to see what that file is. But for now, we are sending my data, which a user might have submitted onto the form, to my Python file. And then, you know, my Python file is going to do, uh, you know, any changes. And the output is going to be returned. Like we saw when we submitted the data, we got 
that data in the form of a dictionary. So that's pretty much it, what's happening in our Python file. But on the other hand, if it's a GET request, what we are going to see is we have an HTML file and we are passing the form to that HTML file. And if we check that out, test.html. So this is uh, simply HTML and this is pretty generic. And if we go scroll down here, we will see that we can change a template and render the fields. So this is my first in, in the form. This is my first field and then the second field and the third field, fourth field, and then I have submit. So pretty generic HTML file. And if and if we go back to here, what do we have next? So this is our app builder base view. What we need to do is we now need to create a dictionary for it. Why? Because if you see here, we have a test plugin and test view. These are the names. Where are these names coming from? So basically, it's coming from here. So the category is going to be test plugin. And then the name of the link is test view. So that, that's what we have here. And, and, on, and the third parameter, third key that we have here is that this view, which we were talking about up until now, is what we're going to serve. So now that we have everything in place, finally, we are going to put everything, you know, all of the blueprints of Flask and the forms and the views, that's everything that it, it, everything belongs to Flask up until now. And now we are going to bundle it up and send it over to the Airflow plugin. So I have a class Airflow test plugin and um, it's inheriting from the Airflow plugin and I call it, you know, you can call it anything. And then I'm saying the Flask blueprint is this, which we had up here. And the view that I want, want it to have is what I'm sending here. So this is pretty much it. This is what we send over, you know, keep it in the folder of Airflow and the magic is done. Now coming back to my Python file, you know, how can you write this Python file? You know, it's pretty simple and nothing is happening here. It's just a class. I'm getting the parameters and then the four parameters uh, from the form, which a user might submit and nothing else. I'm just, you know, uh, adding these values. You know, it's just a values, the dictionary output one, output two, three, four, and these parameters are just being added to these outputs two, three, and four. Well, pretty simple, but you know, I'm just, uh, you know, you, if you if you're getting curious, like what else can you do? So I, I'm just going to show you a sneak peek into one of the use cases uh, that I had come across back in back then. We had Airflow 2.2.1. And like I said, uh, the Swagger UI didn't have a particular request, a very you know specific, unique request that a client needed. So uh, there, uh, you know, instead of this simple Python file, I had a I had this particular file where I would uh, go into Airflow.models and you know uh, uh, fetch diagrams and task instances, and then I would filter based on you know, the start date, end date, based on a particular tag ID, and then finally return certain, uh, you know, uh, values to create a chart. And then, you know, like I said, you know, those uh, static files, JavaScript files, CSS files to create those charts, uh, you, you know, you can uh, get in touch with uh, any front end developer how to, uh, you know, uh, create those uh, beautiful charts on your web page or your browser. But that's pretty much, you know, uh, how much creative you can get and you know keep building on top of your airflow so uh, that's uh you know pretty much it uh for the session